All right, welcome. Um, this is a uh, demo of a uh, software called Record Buddy. Uh, Record Buddy started as a uh, project um, a little bit over a year ago uh, to convert uh, record collections between Tractor and Record Box, uh, which were, were two programs that I was using at the time. And there was nothing that existed that would allow you to um, sync your playlist, but also your beat grids, your cue points, and everything, and take everything with you. And so it um, ended up as a program that's now available on the App Store, which is version one of Record Buddy. Um, supports both Tractor, Record Box, and lets you take your collection with you and sync it back and forth. And what I'm going to demo for you guys today is um, what's going to be the next version of Record Buddy. Uh, and version 2.0 adds support for uh, programs like Serato, PC DJ, Virtual DJ, uh, Mix Vibes, uh, Mixed in Key. Uh, iTunes, pretty much all of them. And, and the real goal is to basically become a hub for all DJ collections so that people are not tied down to one specific program. And if they want to um, use a record box collection as a backup when they usually use Tractor or vice versa, it's just a way to, uh, to really not be tied down to one specific program um, and, um, and be able to take your collection with you when you want to um, switch back and forth. Uh, what it also does, and uh, it's going to be the main part of my demo today, uh, is allow you to organize your track collections in ways that uh, the regular programs um, don't let you. Uh, pretty much every DJ program out there, the browser section is um, something that kind of looks like this. Um, you know, it looks like a spreadsheet, and it's basically columns and things like that. And internally, all the data is really just ID3 tags and text. So the, uh, the program itself doesn't really let you do anything with it that's very useful in terms of organization. Um, everything ends up being very manual and time consuming. So what Record Buddy 2 lets you do is actually um, organize your collection automatically based on um, criteria and, and, and properties of the track. So for example, um, let's say that I have a playlist here and I have a bunch of tracks in this playlist and I want to be able to sort this playlist by a specific criteria. Now it's really important to note that when other programs talk about sorting, what they really mean is usually ordering. Um, you'll click on a column and it'll basically order the tracks by whatever that column says. This actually does real sorting. If I um, right click on this and decide that I want to, I'm going to zoom in for you guys to see, um, I want to sort this playlist by genre what it actually does is create sub playlists, and those are smart playlists that are, are named after all the different genres that this playlist contain. And it does that automatically for you. Um, and it also maintains it live, uh, which is the really uh, interesting part. So if I was to grab, uh, for example, let's pick a genre that doesn't exist in that playlist list. I'm going to grab an acapella, drop it in this playlist. It automatically creates a new uh, smart playlist in there with the new, new genre that just been added. And it doesn't have to stop there. What you can do is um, decide that then you want to sort even further, uh, let's say by key. And now in here, if I zoom out a little bit, now I have all the keys that are uh, found in this playlist underneath um, the, uh, the genres. Uh, you can organize it whichever way you want, whichever way makes sense to you. Um, you'll notice that also sorts properly tracks that do not have any keys or do not have any genres or things like that. So it's easier for you to find, um, you know, if you're um, organizing your collection, to find what uh, data is missing and uh, uh, fix that. So really powerful way to really, um, instead going away from um, organizing all your data in playlists manually, a lot of people do that. They'll have folders on their hard drives or they'll have playlists in Tractor or Serato. That, that sorts manually all the, uh, all the tracks, this does it for you. So all you have to do is really just um, manage one playlist of all tracks that you want, and then before your gig or you know, before you need to use it, just basically organize the sorting and let the program sort it automatically for you. Uh, so properties are pretty useful, but when it gets really, really powerful is when you start using um, tagging. Uh, pretty much all the programs now out there uh, let you do some sort of tagging, uh, but they don't really you do anything with it. So once you spend a lot of time tagging your tracks, there's not much you can do with the tags themselves. What's cool about this is it finally lets you use the tags to, um, to sort your music. So for example, if I was, um, I'm going back to this playlist, uh, if I was to create a tag 
and I want to mark the tracks in my, um, in my collection that I think are cool tracks. So I'm going to create a tag called cool. And I'll mark these tracks. I'll say this track is cool. This track is, if I can type, cool. Um, I'll zoom in so you can see it's basically just a tag uh, field. And um, once you enter something, it becomes a tag object um, called cool. So what that does is, when I go back to my playlist, I've now, in effect, um, created a new sorting criteria called cool, uh, because the tag now exists. And if I sort this playlist by cool, what that does is create two smart playlists, one for the tracks that um, I've marked as cool, and one for the tracks that are not cool. And that lets you basically organize your library any way you want. Um, it's a tag that I've created. You can name it whatever you want, and you can go to town tagging your tracks with things that make sense to you, and then use that to automatically sort um, all the information. Uh, tags can be a little bit more powerful than this. I mean, cool is obviously, it's a binary tag. It's either on or off. But you can create tags that have uh, values, uh, more than one value. So one that I use a lot in my personal collection, it's a tag um, that you can see right here. Uh, if I zoom in in here, there you go. It's a tag called Time of Night, and um, it's a tag I've created, and, and the way it works is you can name the tag something and then use a colon and then give it a value and use multiple values for, um, you know, for, for multiple um, uh, purpose. So in my case, Time of Night has values like early, ramp up, peak, and it, it gives me an indication of when is a good time to play that track. So if I was to grab this playlist and sort it by my Time of Night tag, now, basically, it creates the uh, sub-playlist with the given values for that tag. So again, you basically decide whatever makes sense to you and um, create tags and use that to sort um, your information. And again, I can still go uh, you know, one step further, sort underneath by, let's say, record label, um, and basically you know, have all the information at my fingertips. You might have noticed um, when I was um, editing the tracks that uh, all the information here is uh, not just displayed as text, it's actually displayed as uh, tokens. And the reason for that is uh, RecordBuddy actually uses a real uh, database behind the software. So it's not just editing ID3 tags in the tracks like everybody else does. It's actually a real database that connects the objects together. So if you have artists or tags or keys in your collection, um, it's really easy to just rename. Let's say I want to rename an artist that's misspelled somewhere in my collection. I can just rename the artist object, and I will rename every single track throughout my collection in one go. Um, it's not just something where I have to go to every track, find the track that uses this artist, and then rename manually every track. So it's really, really useful. Uh, you'll also notice that it um, stores uh, multiple keys, if I want to, per track. Um, if you have different programs that analyze um, tracks differently, which happens uh, very often between tractor, mixed in key, uh, I know Recordbox does key analysis now, and they all kind of come up sometime with different, um, uh, different results. You can store all these separately uh, in Recordbuddy and uh, keep the information and decide which ones make sense to you. And of course, you can view this information um, using different notations. So if you want to um, display it using the Camelot notation, let's say like what's being displayed right now, um, or you can select uh, musical notation, open key, whatever you want, and basically just go back and forth between uh, all the different musical notation. So, something else that's um, very useful when you organize your collection is to be able to filter um, through, um, through tracks. And um, one thing that's cool with Record Buddy is um, the filters basically act like smart, uh, smart playlists but they only work on the playlist that you apply the filters to. And let me show you what I mean by this. Um, I'm going to go back to this and remove my sorting criteria. I'm going to create a uh, filter. So you can click on this little filter icon right there. And that adds a filter to this playlist. And let's say that my filter is going to be um, tracks begins with M, for example. So now I have a new filter. Uh, that gives me all the tracks in this playlist that begins with M. And I'm going to rename that, Tracks with M. And it also created a separate playlist that is all the other tracks, so all the tracks that don't match this filter. And you can carry on adding a little bit more. So I'll say Tracks begin with, let's say, F. Now I have a separate filter. I'm going to rename this one too, Tracks with F. 
And again, the last basically is everything that doesn't match this filter. So for uh, track names, it might not be very useful, but where it becomes useful is when you use filters for dates, for example. You can say, um, you know, give me every track that I haven't played for the last three weeks, or every track that uh, I've been released in the last month. And you can create multiple filters like this and go, you know, last month, two weeks, a year, and then save this filter, what I call a filter set, um, save it off so you can reapply it to other playlists. And if you want to you know, use that later on, basically just reapply this filter set to, uh, to a separate playlist and sort out your, uh, um, your tracks like this. So it's all really cool to be able to um, sort your data. But of course, once you, you're built, able to do that, you're going to be able to, you're going to want to sort your playlist using different um, criteria and basically have different views on the same playlist. So a really cool feature uh, of Record Buddy 2.0 is be able to clone a uh, playlist. And what that does is, there's a little clone um, icon right there at the bottom. And if I use that on this playlist, it will actually create a clone of my bounce playlist. And what a clone is, it's basically a, a perfect copy of, of the other playlist that are, is kept in sync with the other one. So if, whenever I drag a track into this, it'll be dragged into this and vice versa. And what we use that for is to be able to have different views on the, uh, on the playlist that you have and sort it by different information. So in this case, if I want to sort it by energy level, um, now I have one that I can call bounce by energy and my main playlist that is still being sorted by the, uh, by the other um, criteria. So it's just a really easy way to either um, you know, grab a playlist containing tracks that you like that have worked before put it in another folder somewhere else and keep them in sync at all times, or have a different view on the playlist um, sorted by different criteria, uh, which is very, very useful once you start um, playing with all this. So, and of course, icing on the cake, once you've done all this, um, you can hit the little sync button in the corner right there, and all that data gets written back to whatever DJ programs you have installed on your computer, be it Serato, Recordbox, Tractor, um, any of them, and, um, and those will appear like regular playlist on those programs, so you can still use your music and, and you know and, and go to your gig and, and use the uh, the sorting information that you had. So, so I hope this gave you a little um, taste of what uh, Record Buddy 2 can do. Um, we are doing a beta release in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're actually going to do it in uh, partnership with uh, DJ Works. They're going to have some uh, beta seats uh, on offer on their website. And um, if you want to get more information on this, um, I am. Down the way, booth A49, I think, right by DJ Mag, um, and you can come by and um, come by, say hi, and uh, ask any questions you have on uh, Record Buddy or any of the features. So, thank you very much.